I'm going to show you how a buckle works, um, how that can be misconceived, and then how to sort buckles out so the wheel stays straight and round at the same time. We're going to be looking at lateral rollout um, and how to uh, sort that out. We're going to be looking at radial rollout, look at how to sort that out. And by the end of it, you should be able to straighten up a wheel up and keep it round at the same time or vice versa. Right, off to the classroom we go. So let's have a look at how a buckle actually works. So this uh, represents our, um, our wheel in a lateral way. So looking at it straight on as it's spinning around that way. And then how it's buckled side to side from there. So a lot of people, and they wouldn't even know that they think this, but the way they actually approach it and try and solve it is the buckle goes straight out like that, straight down like that, and then straight back in like that. Now thinking about it like that, even if it's only subconscious, would mean that you'd have to do this to solve it. So let's say there's three spokes here. So you've got one in the middle. This one's gonna need half a turn on it. This one near the end here, it's gonna need half a turn as well. And then this one at the end here, will also need half a turn. Now, though that would actually solve that problem, that's not actually the problem. That's not how a buckle works. A buckle works like this. So it's come straight down and then the buckle curves out like that and then goes back in like that. And to solve that problem, working on the same basis, so let's start in the middle, we've got three spokes again. This one here would be half a turn. And this one down here, along with this one up here, let's say would be a quarter of a turn. And that basically pulls the curve back in more in the middle than it does at the end. And that's how you get your wheel straight and back in line with the rest of the wheel. Look at the theory of buckles. Let's get a wheel in the jig and have a look at how to straighten it up and how not to straighten it up. Right, as you can see, we've got a reasonably straight wheel here. There's a little bit of a buckle in it. We're just messing around with it so we can, I can show you some stuff. And look at it as well, around this, fairly round. I'll put a little buckle in this, uh, in this wheel. Because I've done it the way I'm gonna show you how to true it, or the right, the right way to true it, it's uh, still pretty round. Bear in mind it's an old wheel, and it didn't really start round. So we're gonna spin the wheel, and we'll just move the little dial in. But if you go through here, you'll, you can hear where it hits the feeder. We've got one, that's the first spoke there, and then it goes to there. So that's what's touching, one, two, three, four spokes. If we just move the feeder in a little bit further, we'll actually see the drags on heavier, and we can see that there's buckle goes from there so that's spoke number one there and it stops there so that's one two three four five six it's actually six spokes on and it might actually be seven considering i just had seven spokes let's uh take that back a little bit so just about touches there and touches again there so that's one two three spokes so the first thing we're going to do this is the middle of the buckle here and then down um just three and then maybe i can't remember which but two spokes that way and one that way or the other way around it's basically um going round like that and an arc. So these ones don't need as much adjusting as these ones. So instead of going for the whole, like six spokes at once, what we're gonna do is we found that where the, the biggest part of the lump is, which is the middle of the buckle, or the middle of that arc, we're gonna adjust them first. So, these three spokes here, let's just check that again. Yep, touches that one, I'm still holding that one. So, to let it go across, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take an eighth of a turn off that, and I'm gonna loosen this one as well by an eighth of a turn. So we've taken a quarter of a turn off this side of the wheel. Now what we're going to do is put a quarter of a turn on that spoke there. Let's go back down. Still touching. So let's go a little bit more. Let's go an eighth of a turn there. Eighth of a turn there. And a quarter of a turn there. Doesn't touch now. So let's wind our feeler gauge in a little bit more. No, nothing. A little bit more and spin it right around. Right, now we've got a little buckle here that's two spokes long. That's a little bit further around. So we've probably adjusted that back in enough and not gone too far. But let's uh, let's just work on these two here. So we'll go an eighth of a turn tightening on that side and pull the wheel across that way. And take an eighth of a turn off that way to let this go that way. The reason we're doing that is so that we're not actually changing the, the radial tension on the spokes because what that would do if we, did, if we just let the spoke go across, we would let the wheel come out around this. If we just pulled pull the rim across with one spoke, that would, have, it would pull it across, but it would also pull it down so you'd have a dip in the wheel. So let's have a look at that. Now that's pretty close. Very why I'm doing this by sound. 
I did have a quick look there at the uh, camera, but we've got a one, two, one, two, three spray. So back to the, the first three again. So it's very slight. So let's just do like a sixteenth of a turn off there. Sixteenth of a turn off there. And then we'll put like an eighth of a turn on to pull it across to balance out the, the two sixteenths of a turn we did there. Now I'm gonna go for that being pretty straight, but let's have a look in the camera. Right, it has got a little buckle in it. But it's not too bad considering it wasn't dead straight to start with. Right, so what's that done to the roundness? If you have a look, it's pretty much as round as it was before. And so that's how you do it. Look, you just have to tighten the spokes on one side and loosen them on the other, on the other side to make the, um, the wheel move across in the same plane. So you're not changing the roundness of it. You're not changing the tension because whatever you do in an area here affects the rest of the wheel. So if you just loosen the spokes up in one place, it makes the spokes looser on the other side of the wheel. Um, so I'm going to uh, put another buckle in this and I'm going to show you how a lot of people do it and, um, and why it goes wrong. I've just put another buckle in this wheel. I've shown you how to do the buckle properly um, and uh, now I'm going to show you how to do it the wrong way. Now you can see the buckle there. I'm going to look at the roundness. Yeah, it's still reasonably round. Okay, so it's got a buckle to the right and, um, and it's fairly round. Now there's two ways that people approach this that are wrong and then there's the right way, which I've shown you. So let's look at the first thing that people might do. They go, ah, right. Let's find the buckle. Right, so the buckle's there. That's one, two, to there. One, two, three, four, five. Right, so let's, um, let's just loosen the spokes on this side because it, it starts with the, the right hand side and ends with the right hand side. So what we'll do is we'll just, uh, I don't know, take like a quarter of a turn off that, a quarter of a turn off that, and a quarter of a turn off that. Okay, oh, that's no, still there. So let's go back. All right, so even though it goes to this spoke, we're still only going to work with these two spokes, which is something a lot of people do. They just undo the spokes to let the wheel across. They do those two there. And look, they're starting to disappear. We've got two problems here. The first one is um, we've loosened the spokes off. So as you can see, it now looks like it's got the buckle across there. Like it's going that way now, rather than when it was going this way. So let's have a look at what we've done to the roundness. And you can see where we were working on the wheel there, but it's no longer round there. And what's actually happened is the rim's been let out because we've let the spokes off, but we haven't counterbalanced that letting off by tightening the other side so it keeps the wheel perfectly round. So let's just pull that back and we'll start again. Right, so let's have a look at another way that you can do this wrong, just by tightening the spokes rather than tightening and loosening them to, to balance the wheel in its roundness at the same time. And let's have a quick look at this do all this by sound. I want to see how it's done just by sound. Have a look at my blindfolded wheel build. Right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spokes. Right, what we're going to do is we're only going to tighten this side, so that means we're going to not even go to the ends of the buckle. So let's put a quarter of a turn on that, a quarter of a turn on that, whoa, that's not too good, that needs a bit of oil, and a quarter of a turn on that. And that's still there. It starts there. It ends at the same place, so it's still seven spokes long. Let's put another quarter of a turn on that. Another quarter of a turn on that. Another quarter of a turn on that. I've got to get some oil. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And so this has actually made this, the buckle longer. It's not as bad, but it's longer. Um, and that, that often happens when, even when you do it right, because if you've, you've taken the main lump out of the middle, and now you're working on that. So let's uh, do the tightening of spokes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six on that side of the turn. So let's just go an eighth of a turn. That's taken a lot of that out. Spokes gone back down to two, four, six. So let's just do an eighth of a turn on these three. So we're just tightening now, we're not loosening to balance it. Oh, I can't hear anything, how's that looking? It's actually not too bad, considering I wasn't watching. But let's have a look at the round and see if that's still doing all right. Now you can see here, so it's just touching, but where we've just been tightening the spokes, it's lifted the, uh, it's pulled the rim in. So now you've got a dip in your wheel as well. And you can imagine if you kept going on and doing that, you could make that really badly and have a wheel that's just going like that. In this part of the video, we're gonna be looking at getting the roundness right in a wheel. 
So if you've got a big lump in the wheel or a dip, I'm gonna show you how to get that out and keep the wheel straight at the same time. Unsurprisingly, with the radial rollout, which is basically how round the wheel is and whether it has any um, dips or uh, lumps in it, is exactly the same. You know, people think about the problem as it being like this, where it goes straight out, straight along, and then straight back down in. And again, with this problem, people think about it and they're gonna do the same thing. And they're gonna put the same tension here, here, and here. And yes, that will solve that problem, but that's not the problem. The real problem, when you've got a dip or a lump in, in this example here, is that it goes like this. It goes up, put the curves back down. And so you've got to do the same thing. You've got to put more tension here than you do here and here. Where, where we've been doing the truing wrong by just loosening or just tightening rather than doing the two together to keep the wheel in plane. It's got a bit of a lump in it. Oh, we've got more than one lump in it. Um, I've exasperated one of those by um, just letting the wheel out a bit more in the same place or the same area. Anyway, let's look how unround it is. See a drag in there and then it's not dragging so that's lower than the bit that's hitting. There's a bit hitting there. This is a real big bit. This is where I basically loosened off some more spokes to make the uh, rise or the lump in the, in the roundness bigger. So let's just move this down so we can have a look at the trueness. Um, you know, that little spin. Now it's out a bit, but I'm not surprised considering we weren't truing it properly. And then I've just gone and loosened some spokes off, but it's not too bad, you know, considering all of that. So let's uh, wind that back off and um, let's explain how to get the lump out of a wheel. And it's the same as how to get a dip out of the wheel. All we're gonna be doing is tightening the spokes to, to pull that arc in. Remember it's an arc, so at one end, it's loose, the spokes aren't, don't need as much adjustment as the ones in the middle. Um, if it's dipping in, you just do the same thing, but you loosen the spokes off in the same manner and that will let the rim out in that area. So let's get this back up so it's rubbing. Right, so let's uh, look at the um, roundness of this, not touching the gauge at all. And then right in that area, there it is. So that's coming out this way. So we need to tighten the spokes in that area to make it pull back into the same roundness as the rest of the wheel. We look at that, we've got starts there and it goes to there. Now that's four spokes. So that's actually fairly easy because it's not an odd number of spokes. But um, we don't want to go too far because well, otherwise uh, we'll end up with it going further than it should do. And then we'll have to just like work it back the other way later on. So let's just put a quarter of a turn on because it's quite a big um, lump. Run it through again, so it's still dragging. Right, it's still four spokes long, so let's hit them again. And it's gone. So we know where the area of the wheel is. So let's uh, push the gauge a bit closer. And we're back to where we were, like the same area of the wheel. And if you look, it just starts just past this spoke. So we'll count that spoke as part of it. So if it's one, two, three, four, five. All right, well, let's, let's just call it four. We'll go back to here. And it's just past that spoke anyway. So rather than go for the spoke past where it touches, we go for the one just inside it. I'm gonna just put a, like an eighth of a turn on each of these now. One. Now doing that over there, we've now got a little lump just here. Now it's on one spoke. So what we're gonna to have to do here, instead of just tightening that spoke up to pull it in, because what that will do is pull the wheel across this way, and so it'll be out chewing that area again, is we're gonna put like an eighth of a turn on the middle one, so that's pulling the wheel across this way, and then we're gonna put like a sixteenth of a turn on that one, and a sixteenth of a turn on that one just to balance that out. So let's pull the wheel in, so because we've done the same tension on both sides, or the same adjustment on both sides, it should keep it straight, or it'll keep it fairly straight anyway. And it's gone. And we've got one more here, let's get rid of this while we're at it. So that's two spokes long. Let's just put like an eighth of a turn on there, an eighth of a turn on there. Now, that sounds longer. So it's just over two spokes long. Now the reason that's happened is because we've uh, we pulled that in and it's actually spread some of the, the lump further away. But look, let's just go another eighth of a turn. Again, now it's just brushing on that one spoke. So instead of just tightening that spoke up, which will pull the wheel across this way and, and, and buckle it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put like an eighth of a turn on that one. And because the, the, the uh, buckle is arced out and these ones need to be loose, so we're just gonna do them like a sixteenth of a turn each. Now that's not perfect, but it wasn't perfect when we started and we've been messing about with it. Let's have a look at how straight it is now after we work with the roundness and got it pretty round. 
And it's a little bit buckled, but it's no worse than it was before. I mean, in fact, it might even be a bit better. I mean, that gap in there, I can't even really see it without my glasses. I'm going with gap being less than a mil. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and now you know how to keep it all together so your wheels stay round and straight at the same time. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, give me some thumbs up, and leave any comments down below. Happy wheel building and safe, enjoyable cycling. <laughs>